Now we're up to M9. M9 is a modified block. So I'm going to go to the paper pieces booklet. And they have just taken off this outside border, which is going to be the, where the sashing is anyway. So it's, it's going to look the same. Here we have um, eight sections of triangles with, that are segmented, I guess would be the best description. What I'm going to do here is if you look at this, you've got like a four block assembly here with the four sections. I'm going to put these triangles together. And when I line them up, I'm going to line them up on this straight edge. This is going to give me the best accuracy. I will confirm this, but it's been harder for me at least to line up this 45 degree angle than it is with a 90 degree angle here. So I will make each one of these eight triangles and the, they are um, alternating colors. So I do have them laid out here and I have it looks like a similar color, but this is actually quite a bold print. It's a stripe, and so when I was laying it out, I made sure I had my arrows. And this is going to be, stripes are going to be this way here, and they're going to be this way here. So in the middle, you're going to get this pinwheel effect, because you're going up, over, down, over, such and such. So I will work in sections of three, lining up on this straight edge, and then I'll be able to assemble them to make the block from there. For basting, I'm going to see, play with the basting here, but what I want to achieve here in the middle is a pinwheel effect with my tags. So I'm going to make sure that when I, when I base these, I turn them the same way and base them the exact same way. So if I want to do this and then this, I have to do that with every single one of them, regardless of the fabric. That way when I turn them again, the, pit, the pegs, the tags, excuse me, will be in a pinwheel effect. So hopefully that's what we'll achieve as I go through here and I will get to basing the first section. So I did some experimenting with the um, tags and the basting and I've determined that there is two patterns actually. You're going to have to have one pattern for the focus fabric and one pattern for the background. Otherwise, because when I did this, these were clashing and it creates issues. This way, these nest real nicely. So what I did for this one is I did this side and then this side, and then I did the hypotenuse, and it doesn't matter which order these legs are, but this is last. On this one, I did this hypotenuse first and then the legs, because that way then it goes towards this and this will create a nice little effect for these it's the same thing except this I did in a circle so I started on this flat side and no I didn't I lied I started on the long side and then the flat side and then the top and then the angle and so I did that in a circle these I did the two shorter sides and then the long sides to get that effect so then when I do this over here I'm going to have this thing is going to be able to nest like this. That way I'm going to be able to sew this a lot more accurately. So for these short sides, for the, for the focus fabric, I do short sides first, then the long sides. The background, bottom, 90 degree side, top, then the angle. That way you've got the tags going away. This is a necessary thing so that it's a lot easier later. And this was the same thing. Bottom, the flat, the 90 degree side, top, and then the angle, even though it's opposite of this. And this was that. So this is what you're going to get as an effect through this whole thing. So right now I'm going to assemble these into their triangle units. So I've put my first triangle together. And what I did when I lined them up is I lined this up right here. Now, when you baste, this may not be exactly perfect to the papers, which is why you want to line it up here on this 90 degree edge. Because this, you can feel where the paper is, and when you go to stitch it together, it will fix any, any of the basting issues for the most part. So if you line this up here, you should, in theory, have a 45 degree angle across all three pieces right here. So I'm going to stick this here and I'll put this together 
and then I'm going to actually, when I put these together, I'm going to put these together with this. So I'm going to make squares with this rather than these, you know, I'm not going to make triangles. I'm going to make squares. So I'll put this together just because I already have it basted and then I'll move on. I don't want to base too many of these in advance because I don't want to mix up which ones are which. So that's why I'm going to baste them as I go. So I've got the second triangle assembled and I will then go to, I'll probably do this one next to connect to this one. Okay, so I've got this triangle done, ready to connect to this one and make a square. Now the trick that you're going to have is to ensure that your intersections match up where they should. So you're going to, you may have to force it into submission, like there's a gap here that will get sewn together after I do it, but I'm going to, I'm going to put my tape here in the center and then I'm going to start here and then I'll go about to the center of this and then tie off and then I'll start to the other side and work my way back. When I get to this intersection though, I will um, do the little X joint so I can make sure that I get it exactly where I want it to and close it as tightly as possible. So then I have a true square in the effect that I need it. So I've assembled these two triangles into one of the corner squares and now I am going to assemble this triangle so I can attach it to this one. So I've assembled my second square and um, I can still see the words here so I know in which direction or which square it is because technically it could be any one of them. So I'm going to attach these two so that I have the whole first half of that block completed and in the right location and then I can go ahead and assemble this next section. So I've got my two squares assembled. So the bottom half of my block is completed. So I'm going to set this aside and then work on the top half here. So I got another quarter of the block completed just in the same fashion as I did the bottom section. And I will go on to the final corner. So I've attached these triangles together for the upper corner and now I will connect the two squares. So I got the top section all assembled and now it's just a matter of connecting it to the bottom. So I finished assembling my entire block and notice here how these tags go in a spiral and that's why you would wanted to baste them the way you did so that they um, come together like that and now my M9 block is complete.